Hey everyone, welcome to part two of my Proton Pack build tutorial. If you haven't already seen part one first, make sure you look at that. There'll be a link in the description. Today I'm going to show you how to take it from looking like a bunch of foam pieces to looking like this. There's also a couple pieces I forgot to add in the last video, so I'll show those at the beginning of this one. All right, let's get making. Okay, do some sloppy glue gun work to make a fake welding bead on the edges of the grain elevator. Make a stack of two disc 41s, draw four evenly spaced lines across the top, and cut on either side of each line to create a little valley. That should leave you with a kind of knob looking thing. And as we all know, knobs go on the side of grain elevators. And fake bolts go on the top of grain elevators. Pull apart a pen and press it firmly into the foam. Add a little twisting motion for excitement. Heat up a hex key till it's hot, but not too hot and firmly press it down in the center. Kinda ends up looking like those screw heads that are made so you can't unscrew them. Grab an eight millimeter punch and punch four discs from six millimeter foam. Carefully heat up the discs a little bit with a heat gun and do some more hex key squishing. You can see by the fact that my hand's shaking, I'm squishing pretty hard, or I'm just super weak. A little super glue on the back and glue them into place on top of piece 30, the one on the side of the pack. And yes, I started painting before remembering to glue these on. A little Velcro on the back of the battery pack and glue the other side of the Velcro just inside the hole. Now it's time to paint. Paint it black. I recommend at least three coats of artist acrylic paints. I know it sounds crazy, but it makes it a lot easier when you're applying the antiquing later. Make sure to protect your little lights if you want them to look good. There are some spots that are really hard to get with a normal paintbrush. That's why I created an abnormal paintbrush with a pair of pliers and some bending skills. Now I can paint anywhere. Once you've painted everything black three times, you should be feeling very relaxed. While that's drying, go look around your neighborhood for abandoned color laser printers. Once you've found one, print off all the warning stickers. I found the ones I used at hprops.com. Thanks, hprops. Cut them out roughly. Grab some nice clear packing tape and cover the stickers with the tape. Then you can cut through the tape and the paper right down to the edge. Round any corners that need rounding. A bit of sticky tack on each sticker so it doesn't blow away and spray some spray adhesive on the backs. Use it according to the manufacturer's directions. Once you've waited an appropriate amount of time, peel off your brand new stickers and stick them on the pack. Just remember to take off that sticky tack. I will mention before you stick on the clippered sticker, you do want to paint the top of the clippered valve silver. It just means you don't have to paint right up to the sticker later. I'm using DecoArt Americana Decor Metallics paints, and I'm mixing half and half silver and pewter. That gives me my favorite steelish color. Put the paint on some scrap cardboard, and with a gloved hand, rub just a tiny, tiny little bit of that paint onto your finger. Then rub your finger all over your proton pack. Basically, we're trying to make it look like it was all originally painted black, and then through the wear and tear of excessive amounts of ghost hunting, some of the paint got rubbed off, revealing the metal underneath. The only difference is we're actually painting the metal on top instead of revealing it. A little more silver with the brush, and put a sticker on the clippered valve. Now it's time to go to the thrift store and get some wires. I bought a whole bunch of different types to try out. I ended up using one long networking cable and one slightly thinner VGA cable. Cut off a piece of networking cable 150 inches or 381 centimeters long. Remove the jacket either with a knife or the handy little string inside. Inside the cable you should find four sets of twisted wires and maybe a few other bits and pieces. Cut the wires into segments 62 and a half centimeters or 24 and a half inches long. Take your wires to a tiny little vise, put one end in the vise and the other end in some pliers, and pull. Just enough to straighten the wires out so they're easier to work with. Now we're going to use these wires to make the ribbon cable, and I'm using this T-Rex tape to hold them all together. This tape is kind of like a clear vinyl almost, not at all like regular packing tape, it's thicker and more flexible. So tape down your tape, sticky side up, and then start laying down your nice straight wires. Make sure to leave some room between the wire and the outside edge of the tape. In fact, leave a little bit more than I left here. From there, just keep adding wires side by side until you've filled up the tape strip. I ended up fitting 21 sets of wires on my tape strip. However, I'd probably do one less to give a little more tape on the edge. 
Once all the wires are laid down, put another layer of tape over the top. Make sure the tape is able to stick to itself on both sides, then grab your heat gun and start warming up the tape. You'll notice as the tape warms up, it gets soft and flexible and even maybe shrinks a little bit. And that's great, because we can press it down against the wires and it'll conform to their contours, which helps it look just a little bit less homemade. Once you've heated and squooshed one side, flip it over and heat and squoosh the other side. And cut the ends off flush. Buy a 1 inch rubber insulated clamp from the car parts store. My store only sold them in packs of 10, so I guess I have to make 9 more proton packs. Find a random screw, drill a little hole, and attach the clamp. Twist up the ribbon cable and slide it through the clamp. The homemade ribbon cable isn't nearly as flexible as a normal ribbon cable would be, which means it's harder to bend, but also means it'll stay in place once you've got it bent. The tighter you twist it, the longer the cable ends up being. So give it a nice tight twist. Glue one end into the hole, paint piece 63 silver, mark where the ribbon cable will go, sand away the paint you just painted on, glue the cable down, and glue piece 63 on top. Now go back to the hardware store and grab 5 quarter inch compression nuts. I only got 4 because that was all they had. While you're there you might as well also grab some wire protector in 3 quarter inch and quarter inch sizes. Punch a couple discs out of your paint tray and stick them on some copper tape. Give them a little rub and cut them out with a little extra tape sticking out around them. Jam the disc into the compression nut, add a little bit of hot glue and you'd never even know there used to be a hole there. Now find a screw where the head fits right into the grooves of the quarter inch wire protector. Drill a hole just one size smaller than the screw in the side of the compression nut. Then force the screw into that hole. Now look, you've made a hose connector thing. Grab some two part epoxy, mix it together really really well. Put some in your hose connector thing and push another screw head into that epoxy. Make a little hole in the top of that tube and screw in your brand new hose connector. Make a second hose connector exactly the same way and screw it into this tube right here. Cut a 33 and a half centimeter strip of wire protector and attach it between your two hose connectors. Now let's make some wire connections. I'm going to be using two different thicknesses, the thinner VGA cable and the thicker networking cable. We'll make some grey plastic right angle connections out of some sort of plumbing connector pipe thing. Cut it at a 45 degree angle, sand it nice and flat, and then super glue those two halves together. Trim it down to size, sand the point off the corner, and fill it with glue for extra strength. I made mine about 2.5 centimeters long. Whittle a sharp pointy stick, cut it off, and glue it in one end of the elbow. Make two more of these and you're good to go. Drill holes here, here, and here. Mix up some epoxy and glue the elbow pieces into their places. Because there were only four quarter inch nuts at the hardware store, I'm going to grab this one off the gray pipe I used earlier for the fifth one. Make a disc, copper taperize it, and jam it in. Drill a hole that will fit the smaller VGA cable and epoxy in a screw. Once the glue's cured, clean out the hole so the wire can get in there. Make a foam ring just to fill up the inside a bit. Drill a hole in the grain elevator and glue it in. To be accurate, the nut should actually be up a bit higher. However, the nut I used is bigger than the other ones, so it doesn't quite fit. The last two compression nuts are going to have the VGA wire coming right out that center hole, but it's a little too big. So cut a foam disc and epoxy it inside the compression nut. And do it again so you have two of them. Once the epoxy's cured, use a small punch right in the center to give yourself a little hole. Now when you slide the cable in, it's going to fit nice and snug. Cut two pieces of the thinner cable, one 75 centimeters long and one 47 centimeters long. Cut two 27 centimeter long strips from the thicker cable. Paint both of the thin wires and one of the thick wires red. You don't need to paint right to the ends because we'll end up cutting these down to size later anyways. Also it gives you somewhere to hold it while it dries. I'm using plaid effects paints and the color I'm using for the red is pyro. And I'm using beta blue to paint the other thicker cable. 
we also need two more pieces of the thinner cable painted blue as well. But I just painted one long one and then cut it later. I'm not sure why I didn't do it with the red ones, I guess I just wasn't that smart back then. One 18 centimeter piece gets painted yellow, also known as fool's gold. Of course you'll need two or three coats to make your paint look fantastic. While you're waiting for the glue to dry, cut a 37 centimeter piece of 3 quarter inch wire protector, also known as split loom. Feed it into the two pipes, and mark and cut off any excess that comes out the other end of the pipe. Now you can squirt some glue in the two pipes, and push it into place. Drill two holes in the side of the ramp, slide a nut onto the longest red wire, and glue it into the hole closest to the top of the pack. Now weave it around and over the larger wire protector, cutting it off at an appropriate length to fit in the grey plastic elbow. Repeat for the second red wire, going around the clippered valve, and ending up on the grey elbow on the cyclotron. Make a hole on the slanty tube end. I couldn't fit my drill in there so I'm just using my hands, like a hand drill. Cut a 45 degree angle on a piece of quarter inch wire protector, cut it about 3.5 centimeters long, and glue it onto the long skinny blue wire. Glue that wire into the hole you just made. Run that wire under the ribbon cable and up to this part, which you should drill a hole in, right now. Cut the wire, glue on the split loom, scrape off some paint for better stickiness, and glue the wire in place. Drill a hole on the other side of that thing, bend the wire kinda crazy, cut it off, and glue it in. Some more hand drilling in the ends of these pipes whilst wishing you had drilled the holes earlier. Some drill drilling in the side of the battery pack box. Then the thicker red and blue cables can get glued into the pipes, trimmed to the right length, and glued in on the other end. One more hole, a short yellow cable, a little bronze pencil end paint, a couple random screws, and a fender washer to top it all off. Proton pack! Alright, there we go. All that's left is the pack frame and the wand. And I'm not sure if I'm going to get them done before Halloween, because just there's some stuff that's come up, and so I might not be able to get to it. I'm going to try, but I can't promise anything. Again, if you want to grab this pattern, or any of my other multiple amazing patterns, there will be a link at the end of the video and in the description. And did you want to know how much it weighs? It's under 4 pounds right now, which I think is pretty good. I've heard some of the packs are like 40 pounds. That's 10 per- that's one tenth of the weight. Thanks for watching. See ya.